What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video, and we are talking about how to defend this Yeti blimp technique that is very powerful at Town Hall 11, 12, and 13. Combination of Yetis and Valkyries inside the battle blimp, usually dropped on a very strategic location on the base with a rage spell, um, can often set up some very nice attacks, and it's used heavily at Town Hall 13, in Town Hall 12 and 11 a little bit as well. We're gonna talk about how to defend it um, at any of those Town Hall levels, some general stuff, good practices for base building, have uh, five different uh, tips to go through, starting with this first one, and um, perhaps the most obvious, but let's talk about the details of it, using Seeking Air Mines. Um, it takes around two Seeking Air Mines to almost take out that blimp. Um, one will take out a little less than half of the uh, of the blimp's hit points. Now, if the uh, uh, blimp is going to come from out here on the outside of the base and target this multi inferno, for example, um, putting a seeking air mine here is not a great idea because people often drop one or two uh, test loons or cocoa loons, as they're called, and those are used to soak up those seeking air mines people try to put to defend this. So put it um, behind one uh, outer defense, typically a mortar or a cannon, on the, outs on the outer perimeter of your base, often outside your walls, is a good way to kind of soak up those loons. And you can see, if you don't put it there, but instead you have them in this next layer, they'll still be able to take out the blimp in time. And I'll talk about this more too. It's important to get that blimp down as quickly as possible before it gets even anywhere in the area of where the value is. So you don't want to get very close to this multi, you want to stay in this outer compartment at least. Um, better to put your defensive techniques farther towards the perimeter of the base and uh, maybe risk them being tripped by some test loons than to uh, put them too deep and have them not really do anything because the blimp will drop around where it should have anyway. So you don't want to put them like back in here because that's where the blimp was supposed to drop anyway. So put them out here. Typically, if you really want to commit, you want to use two. Um, that with the damage of an expo and an archer tower and maybe even an air defense will ensure it goes down very quickly and will keep the Yeti mites far enough away that they probably won't target this multi for a little while and you might be able to keep that up. That is tip number one. In a similar uh, light is using the tornado trap. This is if there's a more obvious place. So it might be with an eagle, with a town hall. The base is set up so it's maybe somewhat isolated. Someone might try to use the Yeti blimp to take that out and focus most of their troops on the rest of your base. Um, when you have a very good idea of where it's gonna come, you can commit that tornado trap, which is a pretty big investment, but you can commit it to putting it in an area that it's likely to happen. Um, typically a Seeking Air Mine, you know, maybe like right there would be good. Test Loon probably wouldn't get it, and it probably, the Test Loons would be a surprise, um, so the, t the Loon probably wouldn't get close enough to trip that. This is a good idea if you have some other damage, so hopefully you'd have like, um, I'm not sure if you even have any in my inventory, but maybe like a neighboring expo that can be targeting the blimp while it's being held up in that tornado, so it does in fact go down. You don't want to break free, then keep going. Um, so use the time that it buys you by having some damage there. But this is a good thing to put, you know, far enough away once again that if it drops here, they're not going to go to that multi-inferno. They're going to go to maybe defenses and neighboring compartments over here. Um, so you, like I said once again, and I'll reiterate, you know, put these defensive techniques a decent distance away, not like crazy on the outside, but a decent distance away so that they take effect before the blimp gets even close to the value point on your base. Um, this is technique is best for you know uh, one hit formats. Uh, Clan War Leagues are a great example because if they know a tornado is there, um, they can do a lot better job avoiding it. If it's just a seeking air mine, it's not as big of an investment. Um, and you want to put a Tesla or two. Never put the tornado trap somewhere there's not a defense because it might just not get any value at all if they attack your base a different way. So put some you know put it near defenses obviously, but you can kind of try to uh, really mess up an attack by doing that. Um, air sweeper, this is something that is one of the best ways to defend it. You want to pair this with an air defense in the local area because the sweeper can kind of fight for you, but if there's not a lot of damage on the 
blimp otherwise it'll continue to push through and eventually it'll get there and it'll actually do even more damage because it'll be dropping its little bombs along the way and it'll continue to drop them on the same area taking out defenses like this archer tower and cannon so you want to have an air defense uh, that can also be in the area as the sweeper is doing its job but if we're defending the eagle here from a blimp coming you know from this air defense and you know keep in mind you're always considering where your town hall is because that's where your blimp will be uh, targeting ultimately so when you're looking at where someone can use a battle blimp on your base you got to look at where they can drop it so it'll target the town hall and it'll uh, path over whatever the value is i think that goes without saying but i just want to point that out um, but anyway the sweeper can push it back pretty nicely the blimp doesn't move too fast the only thing is um, as with the other techniques if it's like back here it's not going to do a whole lot because the time it detects the blimp and fires off the wind or whatever you call it uh, the blimp's already going to be pretty much on top of the eagle, so it's got to be right there next to it. Once again, you want to really try to have it covering a lot of ground leading up to the eagle so it doesn't even get close when it gets shot down. Um, two more to take a look at and talk about here. This one is kind of the, okay, you can use the, <laughs> you can use the Yeti bomb in this area, but I'm going to limit your value. Um, so we can see we're not putting a lot of high value defenses around this inferno. Um, so you're kind of saying, okay, I'll surrender this if you want to use the, uh, the Yeti blimp there. And sometimes you have to do that because you can't cover your entire base for the most part, all the possible angles someone could use it on. Um, one thing to notice is if the outside of the base, I'll just put a few uh, so-called trash buildings uh, on the outside, some collectors and stuff. If that's the outside of the base, it's like these buildings that are kind of more valuable to you because they're deeper in your base. And if people take them out, um, it's going to carve out pathing um, for possibly hybrid or dragons or something like that by taking out those buildings deeper in your base. So typically you want to use those to be non-defensive buildings. The Yeti Mites won't target them um, and by they'll target defenses. So they'll be taking out defenses that are kind of already on the outside of your base anyway, thus limiting the value. If you put a bunch of defenses back here, there's going to be a lot more value because those are defenses deeper in the base and by taking those out you're carving out better pathing in the base um, so if you're going to use kind of the you know white flag you can take this out you know i'll defend better elsewhere on your base um, have these deeper def uh, deeper buildings be non-defensive buildings the yetis don't do that much damage they won't typically take them out it's mainly the yeti mites that do most of the most of the harm to your base last thing this is probably my favorite one i wanted to save it for the end Putting a defensive hero in the queen and the um, champion especially because they can hide behind a wall, putting it in the vicinity but not right on top of whatever the value point is. And you know, as we've gone through, we're defending typically scatter shots, inferno towers, the eagle, the town hall, um, high concentrations of valuable defensive buildings. That's what people are targeting, just to make that clear. Um, but the, uh, the putting like the queen here is going to aggro those yetis so they try to target her then they're going to get stuck on a wall when i use this technique in multiplayer i've definitely found that out that a defensive hero um, especially one that is hiding behind a wall will take away any damage that the yetis themselves will do obviously the yeti mites will still spawn off the yetis and do damage the town hall might even go down but it's really going to limit uh, what additional value will be gotten by maybe that Valkyrie that's or two Valkyries depending on what the town hall level is and what the capacity is inside the blimp um, but you're really going to limit the value that's going to be gotten by the Valkyrie and the Yetis themselves because they'll be beating on a wall you can put the king in the compartment they don't do a lot of damage the Yetis don't um, so if you put the king in the same compartment it is a good idea sometimes and the, the king has a lot of hit points but Better have them beating on a wall. Um, if you put your queen the right distance away, she typically won't jump that wall. She'll be standing where the bomb tower is, more or less, and forcing them up against a wall. So that's a good way that people don't often see as an attacker that that's really going to limit the value. And then one final thing, this is a bonus, guys. Um, this has definitely made me really mad a few times. Putting like a spring trap right where it's likely to drop, and this is best on the town hall, because you know if they're targeting your town hall, it's going to drop as soon as it gets to the town hall automatically. There's no guesswork involved. Um, so if they're likely to come for your town hall, if you have like a spring maybe here and uh, here, there's, there's a good chance if they come for your town hall, one of those yetis is going to be gone right away. The yeti might still spawn, which I think is kind of stupid, but um, it, it does limit the value just like putting a queen here uh, does as well. 
Anyway though, that is all from me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I like making this type of uh, defensive video, just giving you some tips here and there for your own base builds. Uh, if you're interested in full base builds uh, built by me and sent to you guys, check out my Patreon linked in the description. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, BISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time, Bisectatron out.